going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this Saturday edition of the Sunday Night Heat, the Dirty Weekly News and Rumor Show, right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. Your Canadian Dirty Podcast that talks Dirty and No Holds Barred on anything we say, pun intended. Unfortunately, this is not live on Spreaker. This is being recorded offline. It will be available to you at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP or available on the app for all Android and Apple devices. After it is finished recording, it will be posted in full on Spreaker as well as on our YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash NHBWR. Also available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. So go check us out however you want to listen to us. You can follow the podcast on our official Twitter account at No Holds Bar WP as well as our Facebook and Instagram account. All links will be available to you in the YouTube version of this episode. I'm your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host and the host of the Sunday Night Heat, Kyle Masters. And let's get right to the news. That's right. As you all know, that sound signifies the beginning of the weekly news and rumors here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. And before I start, uh, the reason why this is an offline uh, Saturday version of the Sunday Night Heat is because Sunday we have a very, very special live episode going on for you guys. It is a live mock draft, uh, mock draft of the WWE roster, and that will be between me, uh, our, my co-host, Corporate Cappy, and our host from the West Coast, Michael Chow, and each of us will have a specific brand, NXT, Raw, or SmackDown. We are going to redraft the entire roster with the uh, current rumors of the Star shake, or Superstar Shake-Up. You do not want to miss this, folks. It's going to be awesome. We're going to be redrafting the entire rosters. We're going to be redrafting pay-per-views and much, much more surprises coming to you with that episode, guys. So you do not want to miss this. I'm trying so hard to get us on YouTube Live with uh, video, actually, of all three of us doing this. So if not, it'll still be on YouTube Live. There won't, it just won't be live video, but I'm trying my best. I have someone coming over and help me set up on Sunday. If we can get it set up for you guys, you'll be able to see our uh, glorious faces in this live mock trap. If not, we're still going to have it. It's still going to go on, so tune in this Sunday. Uh, I don't know what time around. I'm going to tweet it out, so look out for the tweet. But it'll be this Sunday night. It's going to be an awesome episode for you guys. It's going to be really, really something special. So don't miss out. Tune in on Sunday. Free up your schedule and tune in with us. The chat will be up and you'll be able to chat with us during the draft as well. But other than that, guys, let's get this Sunday night heat out of the way. And it's a Saturday edition. So if news comes out today, I apologize. I recorded this beforehand. So this is Friday night I'm recording this. So if any other news comes out and it's not on this episode, I do apologize. I picked out some pretty interesting articles from the week and some rumors for the week, and I'll be talking about them right here on the episode. So let's get right to the news. And the first bit of news I'm going to start off with is Vince McMahon is mad at Shinsuke Nakamura. Why is old Vince mad at Shinsuke Nakamura? Let's find out, shall we? Shinsuke Nakamura defeated John Cena on August 1st episode of SmackDown Live. The story after the match was how Cena took a scary bump, landing directly on his head after taking an exploder suplex from Nakamura. After the match, it was seen that Nakamura was seen apologizing to John Cena as Cena responded by saying that it has nothing to be worried about, or have nothing to be worried about and to not say sorry. As we know, Cena was thankfully able to escape with uh, no serious injuries reported. According to a new report from Justin Barrasso of Sports Illustrated, Vince McMahon was furious with Nakamura after the match. For those worried about Nakamura, the report says uh, McMahon's anger was more in defense of John Cena, who has been a pillar of the WWE for the past 15 years. Even though he was pissed, Vince reportedly hasn't lost faith in, or faith in Nakamura, though if he makes another big mistake like that, Vince's opinion might sour on the King of Strong Style, according to reports. We also saw a report a few days ago from PW Insider that said backstage officials viewed the incident as a fluke incident. Um, yeah, it <laughs> it was, 100%. Um, okay, let's hear, here's my thing on the whole incident. Um... I don't think it was necessarily a spot they should have done, in my opinion. I think I think you're going to have to blame both guys in this case. Uh, you're going to have to blame Nakamura for, you know, n- kind of knowing that Cena can't take a spot like that. And it, But then it goes back to John Cena. John Cena should know he cannot take a spot like that. I, as much as John Cena 
has the athleticism to do a lot of stuff in the ring. I don't know if he has enough at this point in his career to do a move like that and an explorer suplex like that. He's got to flip all the way over. And I just think John Cena is a little bit more stiff now than he used to be in the ring. And he's got more muscle mass. So it's really, really tough to do a flip like that clean. And, and Cena's not really in the ring mo- much anymore to do stuff like that and to take moves like that. So I don't know. I think it shouldn't have been done, period. I think both these guys should have talked with each other beforehand. So, okay, maybe we shouldn't do that if we're not really too sure about it. Because that was a very scary spot. And we're actually lucky it didn't turn into a worse spot. I mean, John Cena probably could have broken his neck and that could have called it his career. So... Thankfully, he's not hurt, but again, Vince shouldn't be just worried at, or just be pissed at Nakamura in this case. It should be pissed at both guys for agreeing to even try a spot like that, knowing well that they probably couldn't pull it off and there was a chance that it, something would go wrong. So, again, but Vince is senile. We know how old and crazy he is, so... Of course, he's going to blame Nakamura. Of course, he's going to defend John Cena. John Cena has been his golden boy for, like again, the last 15 years. So it's we all knew that Vince was going to blame Nakamura regardless. So I think it's just going to be swept. I think it's just going to be swept under the rug, guys. I think we just got to move on from this and not talk about it anymore and just continue on and build the the character of Shinsuke Nakamura into this future Darby Hall of Famer as they want, want him to be. So... Other than that, superstar Billy Graham took to Facebook to respond to this story about Vince McMahon being uh, mad at Nakamura, calling Vince McMahon a crybaby and telling him to grow up. Here's what he said on his post, and this is, quote, Hey, fans, I just read a few hours ago that the story came out today in Sports Illustrated concerning the fury of one Vince McMahon, seeing that he is furious with the Japanese star Nakamura for dropping Cena on his head in their last match. Vince said he is not so much mad at Shinsuke, but Cena has been the face of the company for a full decade now. Uh, and he puts face in quotes. Not for long, Vince, Mc- Vince, <laughs> Vince Madman McMahon, Cena is on the way to La La Land. I saw Stan Hansen give Bruno the elbow in MSG when he broke Bruno's neck. Oh my god, I remember that. I remember seeing footage of that at least. Vince Sr. didn't cry like a baby. He just let Bruno get his neck fixed and kept on wrestling. Vince is living in Disneyland if you think Cena is still the face, quote-unquote, of the WWE. Grow up, Vince. Hey, fans, I'm still working on my painting, and we'll give you a few more days. Catch you folks later. P.S. God, Vince is such a crybaby. So, Superstar Billy Graham coming out and basically telling it uh, like how all us fans are telling it and just basically calling Vince a crybaby for blaming Nakamura for a just a dangerous spot win. Again, it, I think it goes back to uh, my initial reaction is it's both their faults. And it's one of those things we just got to sweep it under the rug and move on from it, guys. We got to stop letting it bug us. It's one of those things where we can't be too sensitive around. But again, if Vince McMahon wants to come out and blame someone, I think he should step back and, and blame both of them for agreeing to do a spot like that. So that's my opinion. That's the bottom line. Let me know about your opinion, guys. Um, that's just my, again, <laughs> nothing else really much to say. Next bit of news. Got a Darren Young injury update. Darren Young hasn't been seen on WWE television since January. Darren Young suffered a elbow injury during a tag team match on main event against the Colognes. Gee, what a glorious main event match that was. He announced on Instagram the extent of his injury, saying hyperextension, which resulted in a tra- uh, tra- tra- traumatic I apologize, dislocation and fracture of the uh, coronoid process of the right elbow. Long, long name there. Jesus. It required surgery to get fixed. According to a new report from James, James McKenna of the Pro Wrestling Sheet, he says, We have some good news for Darren Young in his WWE return. Young recently had his evaluation with WWE and has been cleared to return. Oh, make Darren Young great again. He's on his way back with that clean Jinder Mahal diet, apparently. I don't know if you guys have seen some recent pictures of... Uh, Darren Young, but that guy is cut and ripped to shit, and he got big. So uh, we'll see what how WWE uses him uh, in the future. So we'll have to see. I don't know if he's got any room on Monday Night Raw. Maybe a shakeup could send him to SmackDown and he could be utilized. Um, article goes on to say he could be returning to WWE television as soon as next week. There's no word on if he will be teaming up with Bob Backlund again, who was managing him prior to his injury. The report confirms that he'll be returning to the Raw brand as of now. So, good for Darren Young. I mean, it's good that he recovered from his injury and he even got uh, a little bit more in shape and got bigger. So, good for him. I mean, it's 
It's always one of those things where you can't really judge the guy until you know the facts. And I can't sit here and say that he's on steroids, but you know, he is pretty big and he's bigger than he used to be, but good for him. Um, again, like I said, he's got no room on raw to be used. I guess and there's too many, sp- there's too many people filling the spots on raw. I think SmackDown, he could be utilized into some way. So hopefully if there is a shakeup coming up after SummerSlam and it looks like there most likely will be, I hope he goes over to SmackDown. I think he's got a better, uh, chance of making it somewhat on SmackDown rather than Monday night raw. So that is it for that news. And that is the, uh, injury update on Darren young. Next bit of news, Enzo Amore potentially hints at not going to 205 Live. With the tag team with tag team partner Big Cass, there have been rumors popping up lately about him having some backstage heat with the WWE locker room. So with this feud with uh, Big Cass at the moment. There's also been some rumors in WWE is currently discussing sending Enzo to NXT or back to 205 Live. Hey, just like I predicted. Now that he is a single star, the idea for Enzo and 205 Live would be that he would provide some star power to the division that could use some help. Like him or not, or like him or not, Enzo is a great on the is great on the microphone and sells merchandise. It appears as if Enzo doesn't have much interest in going to 205 Live and the Cruiserweight division. Enzo actually recently posted on his Instagram that he is 206 pounds and has zero have zero dimes given. So I think that's kind of a shot. People think he can go into 205 Live, think he's 206. But again, if Enzo's even 206, that's still going to cut 205 Live. People would still not care, and Darby will still put him in 205 Live. I think he could be used good in 205 Live. He can actually be a big star in 205 Live. He can help that division. I don't know why he wouldn't want to go there. Right now, he's just getting buried by facing his former tag team partner, Big Cass, and getting overshadowed by Big Show. So... Why the hell would you want to stay there and, and eventually get buried on Raw or go over the rather than go over to 205 Live and actually could potentially be a big star over there? You could be the guy to dethrone Neville. So why the fuck would you want to stay with Crenshaw and your in big cast who's trying to think thinking he's universal title material already? God, you gotta think, Enzo. You can't be setting shots like that. I don't know if it's done on purpose, but who knows? I think Enzo would benefit from 205 Live. Even going back to NXT is still shaky for me. I don't know if he's got the the right spots there to become huge because there's so many guys down there right now and so many guys coming up. And with the potential of more people being sent down, I think he could benefit more from being on 205 Live. So we'll see what happens with Enzo. I'm hoping he goes to 205 Live. If not, then it is what it is, and he's going to get buried. Next bit of news. Plans for Goldust going forward. Golda split with R-Truth on Monday Night Raw several weeks ago. Since the split, he has been getting a bit of television time on a weekly basis. On Raw this week, he teased something big for SummerSlam. Golda said on Raw this week, I can't wait to share my next masterpiece with you all. He also said, will I find my next hero, my next villain, or perhaps a beautiful new Scarlet? So what the heck is going on? And when I heard this at Raw in Toronto this week, I was, man, the, the crowd was really, really behind this, so... The Goldust thing is not dying out right now. This is probably the best work we've seen him do since he used to be heel Goldust. And now teasing a beautiful new Scarlet. Teasing, you know, he used to have a, a woman manager back in the day, uh, Terry Runnels. So hopefully he gets another one. I think it would be huge for his character. I, to, and honestly, my honest opinion, I think uh, Dana Brooke would be the perfect fit for that. She can lose her little bodybuilder kind of strong gimmick and it'd be Goldust's like, you know, creepy manager. I think it would boost her up. I think it'd be good for her. I'm, that's just my opinion. Um, the rest of this article says, according to Dave Meltzer on a Wrestling Observer newsletter, or uh, radio, sorry, Goldust might be transitioning into a more of a managerial role moving forward. Ooh, so maybe now Goldust being the manager. That's interesting. At SummerSlam, it appears as if he will find we will find out who he'll be taking under his wing. The idea, according to Meltzer, is that Darby can use Goldust's microphone skills to help elevate another superstar. Now, could this be Darren Young? I don't know, man. I mean, Darren Young with his new physique doesn't really fit that role of uh, Goldust's, uh, Goldust being his manager. Uh, if I can think of anyone, is that dude in NXT, um, Velveteen Dream. He could be uh, that kind of uh, superstar for Goldust to build up, but I don't know if it's too early for Velveteen Dream to get called up. I mean, he's getting a lot of momentum in NXT. I don't know if they want to wreck that so soon, but... If Golas is transitioning to the managerial role, they got to get a, a, the right superstar for him to 
you know, be the manager of, and he's got to fit that Goldust persona. He's got to he's got to get in with that gimmick. It's got to look like he's not trying hard to be like Goldust. So it's going to be really tough if they're going to go in this direction. I think that if Goldust is going to transition into the managerial role, then it's got to be someone almost like Velveteen Dream. I can't really think of anyone else right now. It's going to be like either repackage or can repackage into that role. Um, so it would have been awesome for if Stardust was still around to do something like that, but I guess he's not. So, well, we obviously know why. We obviously know he's not. Uh, anyways, so that's interesting. It's really interesting news. If they're they're planning on tra- just, uh, transitioning Goldust to a managerial role, I mean, he can't really wrestle that much a lot anymore. I mean, he's, the age is really catching up with him. But I like it. I love the promos, and it's it, the, the article is right about his microphone skills. It can actually help elevate another superstar. So we'll see what happens. I'm actually really intrigued to see what happens and what's next for Goldust, Mr. Goldie. I got some news here, some more news on John Jones. From the UFC, if you guys don't know, he is a the light heavyweight champion of the UFC. He's teasing a SummerSlam appearance. Ooh. There have been a ton of talk circulating lately about a potential UFC fight between Jun Jones and Brock Lesnar. This came after Jones called out Lesnar following his recent win at UFC 2014 to win the light heavyweight championship against Daniel Cormier. Adding some extra intrigue to the situation, Paul Heyman announced that if Brock Lesnar lost, loses the Universal title at SummerSlam, he is leaving the WWE. This has a lot of fans thinking that he is going to drop the title and go fight John Jones in the UFC. There was a rumor floating around last week that suggested Jones was interested in a WWE payday. This has led to speculation that he could appear at SummerSlam during the match between Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns, Mojo, and Braun Strowman. Oh, could you imagine that? We already know that Derby and UFC are working on some partnerships in, right now. We, it's clearly seen throughout social media and, and through other media sources. So maybe this is another one of these things where uh, Derby and, and UFC are making money together. And it could uh, let John Jones be a ringside probably for uh, Brock Lesnar's match. You know, I could probably see like a stare down between the guys and maybe John Jones take a, takes a shot at Brock Lesnar or Brock Lesnar spits in John Jones's face. You know, something to hype their uh, their UFC match if these guys are eventually going to have this super fight that is rumored to happen. So I think that's a really good idea if Jones is actually there at SummerSlam, if the current plans are for Lesnar to leave the WWE and face Jones. So I know UFC is all over that with boxing making their mega money with this mega fight with McGregor and Mayweather. I think that Derby or UFC is definitely going to cash in on a Lesnar Jones kind of thing. So I think it's going to happen. I can kind of see Jones being at ringside in some way or, you know, getting somewhat involved in the match. So we'll see what happens. I mean, I've also read rumors already that Lesnar is scheduled to actually retain the title. So we will see what happens at SummerSlam. But I'm intrigued about this uh, John Jones situation. We'll have to see what happens. And speaking of the UFC, more rumors on Ronda Rousey coming to the WWE. Yes, Ronda Rousey. There have been a lot of talk over the past few months about Ronda Rousey potentially joining the wrestling world. Both Triple H and Stephanie McMahon have made it clear that they would love to have Ronda involved with the WWE. She previously appeared at WrestleMania 31 in a cool moment with Triple H, Stephanie, and The Rock. I do remember that. That was a pretty awesome moment. Speculation heated up several weeks ago when Ronda appeared at the Mae Young Classic taping to support her friend uh, Shina Balzer. Uh, Basler? Basler? I don't know if I'm saying that right. Uh, there was a, apparently a cool segment that will air when the Mae Young Classic drops involving Ronda and the four horsewomen of MMA and the four horsewomen of the WWE. Now, our, there are, are some more rumors circulating about Ronda in the WWE. According to a report from Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful.com, Ronda has expressed interest in wrestling. She has also apparently has already learned some basic moves from a WWE superstar. According to the report, WWE referred Ronda to Brian Kendrick. Yeah, the Brian Kendrick for training. That is awesome. I would love to see Ronda get training from him and put it up in the ring. That'd be awesome. But Kendrick also <laughs> recently helped Eva Marie. But you can't compare Eva Marie and Ronda Rousey. That's just retarded. It is just something you don't want to don't want to think about because Eva Marie is nowhere near in fighting shape or have the skill as Ronda Rousey does. So, uh, anyways. Uh, also, fellow four horsewoman uh, Jessamine Duke recently started some pro wrestling training herself. Adding to the speculation about the four horsewomen of the MMA versus the four horsewomen of the, to the WWE in a match. 
I could literally see this happening at WrestleMania, man. I, could, I think it's going to come to fruition. I think eventually we're, we are going to get the four horsewomen of the WWE against the four horsewomen of the um, MMA. I mean, you're going to take a lot out of it. You're going to take Bailey away, Charlotte away, Sasha away, and uh, Becky away from anything uh, important at WrestleMania. But you can really build this into an unreal match if you have it at WrestleMania. I don't know if there'll be really wants that to happen at WrestleMania. I can probably see him doing it at Survivor Series more likely because that's usually the the type of match that they would have it in a, the pay-per-view that would have this type of match at. So I'm thinking more at a Survivor Series match between these uh, these eight women. I think that'd be really cool to see and a really cool spectacle. So we'll see what happens. Uh, the rest of this article says, To add to the rumors, Ronda is also teasing huge news on her official website. Could this be pro wrestling career that she is teasing? We'll have to wait and see, but certainly promising for fans that want to see Ronda wrestle in WWE one day. So again, I'm going with my current prediction at, at Survivor Series. We are going to see the four horsewomen of the WWE facing the four horsewomen of the MMA. I think that'd be a really cool thing to see, so we'll see what happens and if we get even more of a tease at SummerSlam this year. Got an injury update on Scott Dawson. So an update on how long he is scheduled to be out for. WWE fans received some bad news this week. It was first announced that Bailey would be missing SummerSlam due to her shoulder injury. About an hour after the news broke, a report came out that Scott Dawson of the Revival injured his bicep and might need surgery. We already know what happened to Bailey. She was injured during her match with Nia Jax on Raw a few weeks ago. But what happened to Dawson? According to the Dave Meltzer Observing a wrestling observer radio the injury happened at friday night's show uh, live event show in halifax the so last friday night uh in halifax nova scotia dawson worked the saturday and sunday live events with a torn bicep so he did both shows with a torn bicep man good for him man powering through i know that's probably not the safest but the guy is there putting on a show for everybody so i can appreciate that uh, the rest of the article says, once he got on t- to TV on Monday night, he was examined by WWE doctors, and they found the problem. Why is there any doctors at the live event? That's what I want to know. Why did he have to wait for Monday night to get an official examination? That's kind of sketchy in my mind. I don't know. Just just putting that out there. The uh, rest of the article says, according to Dave Meltzer, Dawson will be having a meter later this week to determine if he will require surgery. Um, I actually have some... Uh, some bad news about that is it's not attached to this article, and I probably should have attached it. Um, the current rumors are right now that Scott Dawson will be out till December. That is huge, man. That is a long, long time after. <laughs> no luck for the revival, man. These guys come up, they get called up to Raw at the Raw after WrestleMania, they get a, a jaw injury with uh, a Dash Wilder, and then now Dawson gets hurt, and he now he's out for like six months. That is such bad luck. I feel so bad for the Revival. They're such a good team. It's like ever since they got called up to the main roster, they've just been getting injured, man. That's That sucks. I hope uh, Dawson gets a, a really good recovery. Maybe we see it uh, return earlier, maybe like October, November. But so far, guys, he's uh, rumored to be out until December, and that really sucks for the Revival who are uh, in the mix of being number one contenders on uh, Raw. So that's another team gone for Monday Night Raw. We've been talking about it for weeks here on the show. And how Derby is just splitting up tag teams. Now they didn't even do this on purpose. Now injury is causing a team to basically split up at the moment. So, holy crap, man. You got, like, no teams left on Raw. Tag team wrestling is seriously dying out right now, man. They got to revamp it. This Derby tag team tournament needs to come sooner, I guess, because this really gets getting bad now. So, that sucks. We'll see what happens, what they do with... Uh uh, Dash Wilder, I don't know if he's going to do anything in the singles career thing. I don't know. It's, it, it's interesting, man. I don't know how good of a singles competitor Dash Wilder is. So we'll have to see and wait what happens. But that sucks for Scott Dawson and now being rumored to be injured until December. Got some more news here. Interesting interview with AJ Styles. This is a, it's not really news or rumor. This is just a uh, in, interesting interview I read about AJ Styles. And I want to read it to you guys. So, uh... When you mention AJ Styles and his potential dream match in WWE, it's almost guaranteed that fans will mention both Shinsuke Nakamura and or Finn Balor and or John Cena, which has already happened. Nakamura and AJ have a history with another stemming from their incredible match at Wrestle Kingdom 10. Many fans want to see this happen in a WWE ring. Balor and Styles have a unique history as well. Both are former leaders of the Bullet Club 
and fans have pegged this as a dream match since Styles made his debut in the WWE. So what match would Styles pick if he had to choose between the two, Nakamura and Balor, for a WrestleMania 34 main event? During his recent appearance at Wizarding World Columbus, he chose Nakamura. Oh yeah, baby. All right, this is this is from a quote from AJ Styles. He says, I'm picking Shinsuke. Sorry, that's nothing on Finn Balor. The reason I say this is because it's WrestleMania. It's not going to happen with Finn. And why? Because he's on Raw. Well, AJ Styles, you know there's a superstar shakeup on the way. Maybe you get over there and you're on the same show as Finn Balor. I'd love to see a Balor in, in, in AJ Styles match. I think that'd be dope. Anyways, Styles goes on to say, Shinsuke is my best chance of getting into the main event picture at WrestleMania. You know, technically he's right there. That's why uh, he wins the. Cha- that's why when he wins the championship, I hope he wins it so I can get it uh, in there and wrestle him at WrestleMania for it. So <laughs> AJ Styles is on board with our or their huge fancy matchup at WrestleMania for the title. Uh, he goes on and continues to say, I think it's great that Shinsuke is getting an opportunity to be. I don't know if it's going to be a main event, but I think it's cool this, that it's going to be one of them for, or it's going to be one of them, either Nakamura or Balor at WrestleMania. This guy has paid his dues. He's been in Japan for a long time, and he's so charismatic in everything he does. I'm looking forward to a match like, just like everyone else is. So, <laughs> loving that Styles is on board with us about a. Uh, potential dream match for the championship at WrestleMania with Nakamura. I think that would just make my entire weekend. I know if you guys don't know me and corporate Cappy are going to WrestleMania next year. We're actually about to book the house uh, that we are staying in, um, which is like 50 minutes away from the arena, which is awesome at WrestleMania. So we are seriously going next year. Um, But if I seen that in the main event of WrestleMania next year, God, like I just make my entire week. I'd love to, I can't believe I'd love to see that live for a championship. That'd be amazing. Um, so I hope it happens. So that's just an interesting story and interview I read, and I wanted to share it with you guys from AJ Styles, the phenomenal one. Some more news here. News on the kickoff matches at SummerSlam. Yes, I got some news about these things. If you guys remember last week, I talked about some uh, some new some mat- some of the matches being kept off the card. Now I got some news on some kickoff matches, and this is uh, pretty interesting. SummerSlam is coming up very soon. The event it will be headlined by a massive Fatal 4-Way match for the Universal Championship between Roman Reigns, Strowman, Samoa Joe, and Brock Lesnar. The event will also feature a WWE Championship match between Jinder Mahal and Shinsuke Nakamura. According to the report from the PW Insider Elite, there are a few matches that could end up on the SummerSlam kickoff show. The first kickoff match was reportedly planned to be the Hardys and Revival, but after a recent injury to Scott Dawson, it looks like a match will be scrapped for sure. The Hardys versus Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson will likely be added over the next few weeks instead. Also, the report says that SmackDown tag title match between the New Day and the Usos will be in the kickoff match as well. How the fuck is that a kickoff match? The SmackDown Live tag team titles. Both these teams have done incredible work. The last couple of weeks to to, the, to improve this feud and to get more people invested in it. and their the feud's just been amazing. But to put them in a kickoff match, I don't know, man. That's I think that's a match that you need, that needs to be on the main card. That's a really risky decision on Dirty B's part. I know it's a huge kickoff match, and, and this article says the kickoff show will begin at 5 p.m. The pre-show panel will be Renee Young, Pete Rosenberg, David Otunga, Lita, and Jerry Lawler. Uh, last year's show saw three kickoff matches, so it is unclear at the moment if another one will join the matches listed above. We'll let you know if anything comes more of these changes. I really hope they don't go that role. Uh, <laughs> I'll list you your kickoff matches right away. Um, Hardys and Car and and and. The Hardys in uh, the club can be in the, in the pre-show. The match really means nothing. They're not going to list it as a number one contender opportunity. If they did, I'd say main card. But if not, uh, pre-show is pretty good. Uh, the Cruiserweight title should be in the pre-show. There would be really invest no time in 205 Live. So why the fuck should I care and invest any time into that? That should be also the the other pre-show match. In the third pre-show match, to be honest, it should be Big Show versus Big Cast with, with uh, Enzo in the Shark Cage. Because why the fuck is that main card worthy? Who the hell is excited for that goddamn match? I am. I know I'm not. The match, I guarantee you, is probably going to last five minutes. So, Enzo, you know, don't get worried about up there. You're only going to be up there for five minutes. This match is not going to go longer than five minutes. So, that, in my mind, should be SummerSlam. You get that match out of the way. You can take down the giant crane and get rid of it for the rest of the show. 
Oh my god, man! I really hope they go in that direction. I really hope the SmackDown tag team titles are not on the the kickoff show because that is the wrong place for it. But I wouldn't be surprised because it's WWE. They like to fuck with us and they like to put great matches in the kickoff show where half people are not even watching yet. Terrible, terrible, terrible idea. Oh my god! When I first read that, I couldn't believe it, man. I like this Usos and New Day feud, man. A lot of people are not giving it enough credit. I just love the Usos and the work they've done in their new in- entrance theme. They're just they're becoming more thug, man. It- it's awesome. I honestly really, really want to see this match be on the main card, and I hope they go my kickoff match direction <laughs> if they uh, choose to go, uh, you know, in the right direction, which they probably won't. So we'll see what happens, but. Other than that, guys, that is going to wrap it up today. Remember, tune in tomorrow for our uh, live mock draft special with Michael Chow TV. We'll be redrafting the entire WWE roster as well as redrafting some other things. So it's going to be awesome. Stay tuned for that. Look out for the tweet later today about what time the uh, draft it will be at. And that way you can tune in live with us and you'll be able to chat with us on YouTube. So make sure you make a quick YouTube account if you don't have one. It's really easy. All you have to do is sign up with an email. You don't need to upload any videos or anything like that. But that will allow you to chat with us on YouTube live. But other than that, guys, that is going to wrap it up for the Sunday Night Heat. The WWE Weekly News and Rumor Show right here on Saturday. So Saturday Night Heat on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. This episode of the Sunday Night Heat can be found on in full on Spreaker as well as our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash NHBWR, and also on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. So go check us out however you want to listen to us. Go follow the podcast on our official Twitter account, at No Holds Barred WP, as well as on our Facebook and Instagram accounts as well. All links will be available for you in the YouTube version of this episode. And while you're over on YouTube on our YouTube channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that bell icon for all upload updates. I'm your host of the Sunday Night Heat, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. I'll see you guys tomorrow for the official Derby Live Mock Draft.